out. Live, 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 live. You all look so good tonight. Thank you so much for being here. You know what? I can safely say you are the best looking audience of the season. <laughs> I can say that. I get away with that right now. Welcome to the first episode. We have an amazing season, an amazing night for you tonight. Oh my goodness. Some of you will remember our little show, IMTV, right? <laughs> I remember you by your lilting tones. <laughs> we shot that live at the Spirit Bar in the Hume Hotel for about three seasons. It's been a few years now. And so we're excited to be back with more technology and more things to bring you. And so much has really, really changed. Uh, so much has changed in everything, even our personal lives. For me, one big thing is that I got married. <laughs> And I uh, married a woman. Well, I guess that's two big things, right? That's two big things because coming out of the closet, right? And then your marriage is lesbian. Lesbian marriage. They're, uh, both require a lot of hair products and some really comfortable shoes. Yes, yes, yes. It's our one year anniversary day after tomorrow. Yeah, we made it one year. So I'll take this opportunity. Where are you, darling? Happy anniversary. I love you. Aww. Aww. I always say that being with, with my wife is like the best girl's sleepover like every single day. <laughs> yeah. It's so much fun. Like we're hanging out in our PJs, you know, doing each other's hair, the occasional <laughs> pillow fight. Right? <laughs> Except now when we make a prank call, we call the prime minister. Boop, 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 boop. English. Uh oh. If you know the person of the extension you want to reach, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Six, six, six. <laughs> Singing! Oh my god, oh my god, he answered. You take it. No, you take it. No. Uh, hello? This is the uh, People's Moving Company. Just calling to confirm your move out of the House of Commons on October 19th. <laughs> that was the lesbian handshake. Yeah. <laughs> we do have so much fun. Being married is amazing. Who's married? All right. Oh, four of us, five of us. I gotta tell you how amazing it is. Being married to my wife, though, is especially amazing because she's a chef. Not just any chef, she's the executive chef at the All Seasons here in Nelson. Go see her, have the prompts, you won't regret it. I'd recommend making a reservation. Oh my God, but being married to a chef means there is a lot of butter. There's so much butter. There's butter on everything. It's like a butter bonanza, actually. I didn't know, but you can take a scoop of scraps from the compost bin, you throw that in a pan, you add a little butter, fry that up, you basically got dinner. You take two slices of butter, you put it on either side of a chocolate truffle. Oh my God, you didn't think a chocolate truffle could get any better. It's better. A Little bit of butter right there on the orange peel, better. Butter on a stick of gum, oh man, it goes on and on. It's always better. Have you guys heard about the uh, bulletproof coffee they've got going now, right? You put butter right in your coffee, apparently it's bulletproof. Well, I don't know about bulletproof, but it has definitely added an extra layer that I think would slow down a few stray bullets that were coming my way. We have come a long way with same sex marriage, right? Have we? Especially lately, we really have. Yes, but people still get very, very confused about lesbian weddings. <laughs> people say to me, 
are you both wearing wedding dresses? And you know what they're really thinking, right? Right? Are you both wearing tuxes? <laughs> you know it's true. <laughs> it's true. And then there's the, I've never been to a lesbian wedding. Can I come? <laughs> well, of course you can. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime spectacle, isn't it? And bring all your friends. Or this is my favorite, this guy, right? He's like, which one of you is the groom? <laughs> well, we both are silly, aren't we? We're just like dudes, right? No! No one plays the broom. We both get to be brides. We're going to be wives. It's, um, it's kind of the point. You know what you say? Oh, and this one was special. So I'm like, I'm at the store and I'm in line and I'm waiting to get a few things. You know, I'm getting, picking up some stuff for the wedding and there's this guy in the line behind me and uh, he overhears me talking to the sales clerk about the whole thing and so he chimes in. So, uh, how are you going to consummate that marriage of yours? Though? If you need a little help, you can, uh, you can give me a call. Really? Wow, that is the most generous wedding gift of all. I mean, the effort, the energy, the output. So you want to come over to our team, do you? You know what's involved, right? A mutually beneficial, um, emotionally stable, communicative relationship <laughs> with a lot of clothing shopping, a whole bunch of tiny dogs, and equal division of household chores. <laughs> So you think you can handle it? I didn't think so. Move aside, sir, because two brides are better than one. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a big, big show for you tonight. I'm so, so excited. Jimmy Vunshu, the founder of Shambhala Music Festival, is here. Yes, and his partner in life and love, Jenna Arpita, is joining him. We have Lucas Myers, that's right, joining us to tell us all about his new show at the Capitol, October 2nd and 3rd. He's going to give us a little sneak peek. And we have the sizzling, the smoldering, the scintillating show cats performing at the top of the show. <laughs> the crew is really excited about that one. <laughs> So if you now would please help me in welcoming ex-IMTV patriot, Mr. Marco Sordini. Good to Get see on, you. Hello. hello, is this on? Is, is this on? on? Is this on? Is this on? <laughs> it's amazing to have you back. This is great. Yeah, what this do you is think? So much. We brought all these guys here yeah, for you. All these people yeah, here. Because don't tell them they can see this at home. Don't tell them. Uh, four years. I know it's been a long time. It's been a really long time. Tell me what you've been doing. Oh, you know what does anybody do in four years? <laughs> oh. Um. Not much. I work. Yeah. I work. You get out. I get out. You get out. I do stuff. Yeah. Occasional, Occasional. out. Occasional. <laughs> you <know>. Excellent. Um, <laughs> I had something weird happen to me, though. Yeah, tell me I'm about gonna, that. I want to hear all about that. I don't that. know. It didn't, doesn't happen very often, so when it happened, I remarked it. And okay. I thought to myself, yes. I'm going to be on Jenna's show. Right. This is a good story to tell Jenna. Okay. I had a dog not like me. <laughs> I don't know if you... I, mean, I think I don't that's know a if you, sign of some Well, sort. that in the movies, <laughs> in the movies... Whenever a dog doesn't like somebody, that's the bad guy. True. And True. whenever the bad guy's about to do something, like in The Omen, it's always the dogs and dogs. To, and then you know, like somebody's gonna jump. So I thought to myself, oh my God, does this dog know something I don't? It's possible. What? As, uh, okay. Can it read my subconscious thoughts? Oh, I don't know. Am I really Satan? Sure. And um, that hurt. I'm sorry. Nothing hurts worse than a dog not liking you. It's the worst. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then it's an emotional roller coaster. Well, right? yeah. And then I thought to myself, this is an animal that follows other animals to eat its poop. That's true. So I'm okay. Okay. I think Fair I'm okay. Well, 
Do you remember when we were kids and like the only dogs that you, you know, anybody had on the block were those dogs that were in like those chain link those, fence? Yeah, the longer than it was wide. Exactly. Fence, then... Or they were like roped to the clothesline. Right. And they were just like running around in dirt all the time. The only time we talked about them was like if they pooped out a shopping bag or a squeeze toy or something. <laughs> That was the only, you remember those dogs? But now, Mr. Schnauzerton, he's got his own natural path. And, right. Right? The dog you, know, you know what I'm talking about. The dog psychics. He takes more supplements than I do. They eat he good totally now. does. They, they eat really well. well now. They eat well. They got a coat for every kind of weather. They got the little life jackets with the handle. They totally have those. My dog has a booster seat with its own seat belt. You have you look like, out the window. She has a, a chair with pillows piled up so her dog. <laughs> can it's look out the story. window. We love our dogs. You That's love, where we are. You love your dog. What, well, why don't you have a dog? Why don't you get a dog? I don't have a dog because I'm a bachelor. You are a bachelor. You're a consummate bachelor. I'm a consummate bachelor. So you need to be unencumbered. I'm, I'm the non-consummating consummate bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies. Especially not with dogs. Not with dogs. With dogs. Uh, no, I'm, a, I'm away uh, from home all the time. I saw that. I'm uh, away from home all the time. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a good... I wouldn't be a good pet to my dog. True story. Yeah. Okay. Well, les you know, I'm married, I'm, I'm a home, and we got to yeah. have a lot of tiny yeah, dogs because yeah. we're lesbians, right? So, you know, we're totally different in that way. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, bachelor, of... lesbian. Yeah. It's like a game we used to play. Ah, but you know what we're both a lot alike? Astronauts. This is totally like that game we used to play. Remember what do you that think? that game we used to play? I think this it's game like that. game we used to play? Let's see. Travis, take it away! That's right, it's time for Bachelor Lesbian Astronaut. Ba bachelor Everyone's Lesbian Astronaut. Who wants to play Bachelor Lesbian Astronaut? Anyone? Anyone? Please this join in may with take a while. Yes. Uh, would you like to play Bachelor Lesbian Astronaut? We just, everyone will win a prize. You'll win a prize. This you is... win a prize, you have to answer three simple questions. Yes. Come on. All right, step up to yeah, the plate. Yeah, come on, sit up, sit up. Yes. All right, come on up here, come on up here with the light. All right, what's your name? Hannah. Hannah? Hannah, what do you do, Hannah? I'm good, thanks. She's good. <laughs> this is Hannah, and she does good. <laughs> Hannah, you do well. Superman does good. <laughs> Real simple game. I'm going to make three statements, and you're going to tell me whether it pertains to astronauts. Lesbians or bachelors, okay? You ready to go? Okay. This is gonna be really fun. Okay. Who has a jumpsuit in the trunk of their car right now? Astronaut. No, I'm sorry, it's lesbian. <laughs> Who has an overly styled, ironic, hipster mullet haircut? Astronaut. No, it's lesbian. <laughs> you suck. Okay, this one's easy. This one's easy. We're going to start off with the easy ones. Who loves Tang? Lesbian. Nope, astronauts. <laughs> I thought for sure this was going to be... Uh... Well, you didn't get any of them right, but we can't let you go home empty-handed. So, uh, we got some Tang for you. No, just kidding. Um, we have... We have a uh, gift certificate for Bebo. Nice. Bebo Nelson. Yes. There we go. And there's a business card. All right, so uh, right. Hannah, Hannah popped our cherry. Who's next? Who wants to play? Who wants to play? There you go. There's my man. How are you doing? What's your name? Steven. Steven, are you ready to play Bachelor Lesbian Astronaut? Sweet. I'm... Who has a Tinder account under the name Big Rockets? Lesbian. Nope, astronaut. <laughs> We're not making these easy enough. No. All right, uh, who wears their keys on their belt even though they are not a janitor by trade? Uh, no, bachelor. <laughs> this one, no, 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 no. He's gonna get this next one. I, I swear he's gonna get this next one. Who has a closet full of helmets? A closet full of helmets. Bachelor. No, that was obviously an astronaut. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, well, we've researched this thoroughly. Stand up, stand up, my man. 
We got something for you here. We got something for you. Magic, yeah, yeah. Nobody goes home at the end, did. We have a gift certificate for the all seasons for $25. There you go. Take a friend, whether they be. One more, last contestant, bachelor, lesbian, astronaut. There are no wrong answers. Everybody gets a prize. Stand up, stand up. What's your name? Simon. Simon, how you doing? You ready to play? I'm ready. All right. <laughs> Brought your own pants. Sweet. Uh, who enjoys playing orchestral music while admiring the immensity of space? Astronaut. Sorry, that was bachelors. I do do that. I put on the 2001 Space Odyssey, lie on the tr lie on the top of my car, and wait for the wait for the aliens to take me home. <laughs> yeah, uh, not thoroughly, but they were researched. Uh, who would open a hot Bikram Yoga Studio cupcake store just to meet girls? Lesbian. So close. <laughs> Bachelors. <laughs> it's close. Yeah. Who shaves their bathing suit area, but not their legs? Bachelors. It's true, it's bachelors. All right, you got one right. Hey! All right, finally got one right. All right. Simon, one for nine. Wait a minute, this might be my laundry list. This might be a prize. I don't know. Hold on. All right, we got a gift certificate for It's a Pizza for Simon. All right. And uh, you've been playing... Thank you so much, Marco. Thank Give it up for Marco. <laughs> Let's hear it for Marco Sardini. We'll be, uh, we'll be seeing a lot more of him this season. Well, that game sort of sets up our next video, you know, the way it tears down stereotypes. <laughs> so this is a little video we made of the Gay Pride Parade this year. I was able to go out and talk to the Pride Parade participants just before they were getting ready. And um, Pride is special to me, obviously, for my personal journey. So I'd love to share this with you. Please watch. The Kootenai Pride Parade has been going strong for a glorious 19 years. It's the most visible and inclusive event for all ages during the weekend of Pride in Nelson, BC. And we are here today talking to Pride participants about what Pride means to them. I'm here with Jerry, one of the Pride organizers. Tell us all about the parade. Uh, the parade this year is a little bit shorter than what most people are used to. Um, we're basically going to be starting about the 400 block of Baker Street okay. uh, and then just heading towards the end. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of people that uh, are coming out, as you can see, to, to support the community and everything else. And it's just going to be one giant colorful time. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Tell us about what Pride actually means to you personally. Um, well, Pride. You know, it means different things to different people. For myself, it's about community and it's about inclusion um, and just getting everybody involved, whether you're straight, you're gay, lesbian, bi, transgender, two-spirit, whatever. It's about the whole community coming together and just celebrating who we are as individuals and as a giant group. And it's just, you know, it's all about inclusion. I love it. Thanks for talking to us today. Yeah, happy Pride. Happy Pride, have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me why you're here at Pride. I'm here today because I think that it's really important to understand um, where we've come from, to where we are, uh, to where communities are accepting and tolerant of uh, many different people with many different beliefs and understandings, and uh, sexual identity and um, gender uh, are part of that. And our school district has just developed a policy around sexual identity and and gender, and uh, we're very proud of that. And uh -huh. we want people to know that that we value all students and all employees, and we welcome people with many, many different perspectives. I think for me personally, it's really important um, to, uh, to understand that my husband and I mm -hmm. can be here together today and to represent our family and also uh, represent our school district. Thank you so much for the work you're doing in community. We all appreciate it. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> Jesse, tell me all about what you're doing today. Uh, hi, I'm Jesse Renzi. I'm with the B lobby coordinator for the West Kootenai region of the BC Nurses Union. And we are here supporting Pride and supporting uh, 
uh, the diversity we have within our membership, uh, because BCNU, of course, is very diversified, and we're very proud to be able to join you today and be a part of this. Thank you. And, and what does pride personally mean to you? I think that um, it, it, means, it means a lot to me. I think it's very important that um, folks gather like this and um, parade. It's, this is wonderful. It's just a really good opportunity for us to all get together. I mean, all of us are, are different in so many ways, and I'm just really proud to be here today. Thank you. Oh, Jess, tell me what uh, pride means to you. Oh, gee, it could mean a whole lot of things for a whole different bunch of different people. I'd say for me, it just means just getting out there, uh, letting people know that uh, there are diversities within all of us and that uh, we all need to accept that and uh, all be one and unite. Excellent. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm here at Pride with Jay and Miles, and uh, I'm wondering, what do you think, what's your, you know, what's your heart? What's your heart about Pride? Oh, I love Pride. You know, I, I think it's really, really important for us to have this expression of joy in the, in the community so that we are members of the community and the community comes out and supports Pride and I think it's really good for the youth who, who may be questioning mm -hmm. and to see all this loving acceptance in our community for us loving the community back as well. You know? Thank you. Miles, tell me why, uh, you know, what Pride means to you. Just to uh, go out and have a good time. Yeah. Show everybody that we care. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. You guys have a good time today, okay? Thank you. Yeah, Thank thanks you. so much. Yeah. I'm with Julia Delaney from Freedom Quest. Julia, tell me about your program. Uh, well, we run a, a drop-in group for teens that are questioning their sexuality or sexually diverse. Um, and if anybody wants to be involved, you can call the Youth Center, 352-5656. And ask for Fitz. He's our co-facilitator. Fitz is the co-facilitator. Okay, great. And um, is that running all year long? Yep, it's all year. It's all year. And they can just get in touch with Fitz and become a part of the program that you're in charge of. Yeah, and all the calls are confidential. So even if youth are just interested maybe in more information, they can call and, um, yeah, your name won't be released. Excellent. Thank you. Confidentiality. Sometimes that's very, very important. So tell me, what does pride mean to you? I think that pride, it, like a lot of people think that pride just is supposed to be this big gay celebration, but I think it's everybody coming together no matter your sexuality, your race, your gender, everything. It's just coming together and celebrating who you are. That's beautiful. Thanks so much for sharing that with us today. The wonderful Michelle Mongel. Michelle, tell me why you're here at Pride today. Well, I never miss a Pride Parade because it's such an important part of time of the year. Mm -hmm. It's very fun. Mm -hmm. It's a big celebration, but it's also an important statement about diversity and accepting everybody for who they are and making sure that everybody in our society has their rights and they get to live them and express them every day. Said beautifully. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Have fun. Thank you. You too. I'm here with Deb Kozak, our mayor. Tell me, Deb, what does Pride mean to you? Pride means inclusiveness. It means community celebrating everybody who lives in the community. And uh, it's, a, it's a time of happiness, it's a time of inclusivity, and a, and a time of celebrating all people and all differentness. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Are you walking today? I am walking. Today. Excellent. We look forward to sharing this day with you. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it too. Thanks. I'm here with Don Johnson at Pride. He is in the Liberal Ride, and you are the representative for the Liberal Riding. I'm the candidate, yes, Excellent. indeed. So tell me, why are you here today, and what Pride means to you? Well, I'm here today to be in solidarity with the people that are putting this event on. Uh, my own personal history is I worked in Vancouver Foundation in the early 90s, okay. where I did a lot of work with the LGBT community in Vancouver, oh. uh, starting a lot of the programs that are pretty commonplace today. So I've been involved in gay pride and, and the whole notion of acceptance and inclusion for many, many years. So it's really, really a very important issue to me personally. Excellent. That's great to hear. And so today will you be walking in the parade or are you riding in the parade? I'm going to be walking in the parade. Excellent. It's pedestrian activity today. <laughs> very good. Good for the heart and soul, right? That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And it's looking around. It's a pretty big celebration. It's incredible a community of this size can gather this kind of support and activity, and I think it's just wonderful. Well, thanks for being a part of it and talking to us today, Don. Thank you for okay. having me. Hi, I'm here with Elena. Elena, tell me what pride means to you. Well, it means difference. That's a beautiful, beautiful sentiment. And, and 
It also means rainbows to me. <laughs> it certainly means rainbows to me too. So are you walking in the parade today? Yes. Who's going with you? My mama, I'm riding my horse. Awesome, well let me see your horse. Oh my goodness, this is Elena's horse. Pride's amazing, we're so lucky to have this community. To me, pride is my personal journey of self-acceptance and the embodiment of diversity, unity, and community. And I am so proud to have pride. Well, as you could see, the common thread there was people were talking about diversity, which um, I think is really a beautiful sentiment, uh, especially in our community, seems so much of that. Jesse Renzies of the BC Nurses Union um, felt she needed to follow up after the parade, and she hadn't said quite enough, and she sent me this very touching email that I'd like to share with you. She said that when she was a 12-year-old girl, her uncle was beaten and killed in a back alley in Vancouver. His uh, killers were an alleged group of homophobic men, uh, and they were never charged. And so her family believes that it, due to the nature of, it, of the crime and also his sexual preference, this was the reason. Now, zoom ahead to today, and her uh, nephew now lives in Vancouver, and he's an openly gay man. And she feels that, you know, things are changing, but he isn't completely safe from those same homophobic things that killed the great uncle. And for her, she thinks that being involved with the BC Nurses Union is helping, as they do, with equality in our neighborhoods and in our communities. Uh, Jesse ran for the position of the lobby coordinator and for the West Kootenai region of the BC Nurses Union because she believes that to create change, we must be willing to advocate for change. And I think that's a really beautiful sentiment. So I urge you to please go to the bcnu.org and search LGBT and find out more. Thank you. Now, Jimmy Bunshu is a legend in the Kootenays. Yeah, he is, right? He's the kind of man that sets a vision, goes for his goal, and just gets it done. And we are so proud to have him with us tonight and hear his story. So please help me in welcoming Jimmy Bunshu and his partner in life and love, Jenna Arpita. Hi. So good to have you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a seat. Jenna, thank you for being here. Oh, so good. Please have a seat. Throw the pillows around. Woo! Yeah! Nice. Wow, is it ever a pleasure to sit down and talk to you, sir? You, <laughs> and you, Jenna. Me. Yeah, wonderful. I think what would be neat is right off the bat, if you could just tell people, act like they don't know what it's about. Tell them what Shambhala is. Shambhala, I guess a uh, big dance party where everybody gets together and enjoy life and love yourself, love each other. Right on. And so where did this idea come from? Um, well, uh, we moved to the Kootenays in 94 and okay. we have the my parents bought the farm mm -hmm. in Salmo and uh, a couple of years after that I started going to some of the parties that were going on in the Kootenays, okay. like dance parties. Yeah. And then, um, Which would be called, what, raves at that time? Yeah. 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 Okay. And, yeah. Let's um, just be clear. We didn't yeah. really like that name. Then. Yeah. <laughs> and just kind of put two and two together and I met a lot of the people that were yeah. throwing the parties and we started doing it on the farm. And, Mm -hmm. And so, how many people do you think were at the first gathering? 
probably 500 people. Isn't that amazing? And yeah. today? There's like 15,000 people. Wow, it's incredible. Uh, for those of you who have never been uh, out to the Shambhala farm and been a part of the celebration, it literally is like, you know, the days leading up to the festival are just these quiet farmlands and, you know, a <laughs> beautiful little brook. And then 10,000, 15,000 people yeah. come all at once and build a city pretty much, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. So what are your goals with the festival? How many, do you see this? changing or growing is it gonna get bigger are you trying to keep it the same um for now we're trying to keep it the same we're just yeah. trying to handle what we have i okay. guess is the most yeah. important thing um and just kind of take it one year at a time really mm -hmm. to be honest what kind of music is your music like what is the uh the stuff that you go out stage to stage to see I haven't really gone to stages in the last no. couple of years. Yeah, <laughs> thought so. Yeah. When I, you know, when I think of Jimmy, I, you know, I, I think of this elusive character that I have no. It's an enigma. I don't know where you are and what you're thinking. So that that rings true. Yeah. So you're up at the farmhouse. Or in the office. Or <laughs> yeah, you're just like yeah. talking to people. <laughs> you got, you're yeah. busy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Behind the scenes. Yeah. So Jenna, you guys have um, you got involved and um, kind of dove right in. Tell me about it. Um, well, I've always been a part of the festival from mm -hmm. a guest perspective and teaching yoga at the beach stage, which some of you guys made us Yes, we all know that. Yes. So being on the other side is pretty epic. Mm -hmm. um, you don't see Jimmy because he's either moving really fast or like yeah. catching some deep, well-needed rest, uh -huh. putting oh, out lots of fires. It's, I just feel completely honored, and it blows my mind how it all comes together and works. It's like incredible. The largest city in the in the West Kootenays for that period of time. There's well so said. much more that goes into it than I ever would have thought. Having mm -hmm. been there pretty much from the beginning, I had no idea. To me, on the, right. on the other side, as a guest, it always just seemed completely seamless, uh -huh. which Jimmy was really glad to hear. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it really does. And now you've just taken on this new project, Bloom. So yeah, Bloom and the that. Savoy Hotel, yeah. Yeah, and uh -huh. so the plan is you've got a club downstairs. Yeah, and okay. that opened in July. Mm -hmm. um, next, we're opening um, Falls Music Lounge. Okay. Which will be like dinner and, oh, uh, and it's a brew pub. We're going to okay. make beer. Um, and that's above the club. Yeah. Everyone's happy about that. That'll be fun. <laughs> and then uh, we hope to have live entertainment most nights with, mm -hmm. with your dinner. And it'll be Excellent. fun, fun space. And the club is open how many days a week? Right now it's open two, yeah. uh, other than some other events, but we're going to go to four days a week um, right. soon. So that's a like Wednesday to Saturday format or Thursday yeah. to Sunday? Yeah. Wednesday. yeah. Wednesday. Nice. And where is it? Um, where well, is the club? Tell people who don't uh, understand. It's in the basement it. <laughs> of the <laughs> or Savoy where Hotel. Is it? It's, it's, it's on Baker Street. It's on Baker Street. Yeah. Yeah. Baker. Yeah. Where is it? 198 Baker. Excellent. Yeah, where Paul's. can people find out information about it? Um, on our Facebook page, okay. this Bloom Night Club uh, Facebook page. Awesome. We're, uh, we're working on our big page, but um, mm -hmm. you know we opened the club like a month before the festival, so we didn't get all the details figured out. It looks out. really we good. Were, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it really is an incredible festival. You've brought it so far in 18 years now. Yeah. 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 Going on 19 now. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? And it started yeah. with a grant, is that right? In the uh, old days, you started it yourself? As a well, single pro well, like I said, it started with uh, other people around here that were yeah. throwing parties. And yeah. yeah. But you sort of were at the helm of that and pushed through to make it happen on your... Yeah. And you got your parents to say yes every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're still saying yes. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's funny. They Not never good. thought it would turn into this. So yeah. Kinda, kinda I don't easier think anyone could imagine. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, I understand that the newest member of the family is here tonight. Yay. <laughs> Tell us about him. Uh, his name is Oliver. Oh, we call yes. him Ollie. Yeah. He really likes music. Uh, quiet. Uh, <laughs> this is Violet. Thank you, his <laughs> cousin. Hi, little man. Aww. He's got his Selmo dinner jacket on. Yeah. 
<laughs> which is <laughs> in the Urban Dictionary, in case you didn't know. <laughs> and he's a little mellow. <laughs> <laughs> he's the latest, yeah. greatest raver on our scene. Exactly. And how has that changed your life? Well, it's changed priorities, you know. Obviously, yeah. everything was about the business for so long. And mm -hmm. um, now to go home at the end of the day and, you know, focus on building family and, you know, switching gears, it's, it's great. We're so happy. Yeah. You look happy. Yeah. <laughs> what a special little guy. Yeah. Quiet clapping. Let's do it. <laughs> Give Oliver a little clap. Well, we want to thank you, too, for coming all this way, coming on tonight and telling us about the festival. We're going to share a little video now. Sweetgrass Productions um, has been, wow, how long have they been producing this film now for this footage? Uh, this is their second year, but they filmed it at the festival, and um, okay. this is the first. I haven't seen it yet. So wow, this is exciting. Kind of fresh You're going to be footage. impressed. <laughs> so we're going to share a little snippet of Sweetgrass's production of Shambhala. Please watch.
you know, kind of what goes on there. I've been about 11 times and every time has just been an exciting experience for me. Shane, the director of the lineup, and myself have been working with this charity called Make a Change Canada, and we're going to be doing a live broadcast from this room on October 8th at 4.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. This celebration is for Make a Change because it's their 10-year extravaganza. They've been doing wonderful things in this community for the last 10 years. What they do is they help people with challenges to employment, get them back to work with skills training and all kinds of support to help them find employment. So if you would just watch this little video, we'd like to share with you what they are all about. Make a Change is an organization that helps individual Canadians reach their full potential. We're celebrating 10 years of success. Make a Change offers two online programs across Canada. BA, the Business Abilities Program, focuses on business plan development. IBDE offers two courses, Web Essentials and Web Advanced. All of our programs make use of the latest learning technologies. We've been studying online from the business abilities. We have our weekly Skype calls where all the coaches go online and we talk about what you guys have presented the following week and we go through the uh, worksheets. Kip is just one of the success stories we will feature at the extravaganza. In August 2014, members of Kip, the Kootenai Initiative Program, joined our business abilities program with the goal of opening their own business. Yeah, working through the worksheets and uh, giving it a good go at it. We've put about six solid months of doing modules from the worksheets. We really enjoyed the program and it's working very well. We're delighted that Interior Health plays a lead role and has made significant contributions to the success of this group. Got some great uh, backing with the uh, uh, community futures and the funding and the community health. I was impressed when I sat down with the group as to how far along they were and how prepared they were. It was just a positive thing to go through and I'm really glad I took part in it. It was definitely a journey I wanted to take again. The KIPP group will open their doors in November 2015 as the Reclaim Outlet. Join us on October the 8th in Nelson, British Columbia. We'll be broadcasting live from the Shambhala Music and Performance Hall at Selkirk College. We'll be back after this little short 15 minute intermission with Lucas Myers.
It was shaping up to be a standard layabout kind of night. I was already nose deep in the newest Slade Rogers venture when something peculiar happened. A knock at my door. Just a minute. Who could be coming by at this hour? Please come in. Have a seat, miss. Mrs. Inglewood, I heard from a friend that you're in the business of finding people. Not in the mood for pleasantries, I take it. Well, I'm sorry if I come across as blunt, Mr. Ed, would you like some coffee? Ed, I'd rather have this matter settled sooner than later, if that's all right with you. Of course. Please excuse my manners. So who's the lucky guy? It's my husband, Robert. About a month ago, he started oh, working boy. with a friend of his. Another dame all a fuss over some fella dropped through a hole in her pocket. Down on the boardwalk. But who was he I to judge? Business evening. had been slow, and days, I could use a chance to stretch my legs. I placed a call Boardwalk, at eh? What's the friend's name? I'm afraid I have no idea. Well, don't worry, Miss Englewood. You'll have your husband back soon enough. A contact told me the friend, Howard Strange, was working down on the boardwalk. It was time to pay him a visit. I told the fella at the gate I had a letter for Strange, had to be delivered in person. He waved me through and told me the lot number, B5, something like an airplane hangar with a stage. What are they doing in there? I guess I had to find out. Oh, what the bloody hell do you want? Strange, I presume. Doctor Strange. Yes, yes, please come in. Now how can I help you? I've been hired with regards to the sudden disappearance of Robert Englewood. Disappearance? I don't suppose you're under the employ of Miss Englewood by any chance. At any rate, you could tell Miss Englewood her husband is fine. He and I have been working in the temporary lab the past few days. Ah, here he is now. Ah, we have a guest. And you are? A private investigator hired by your wife. It seems she's worried as to where you've been these past few evenings. I can assure you it was never my intention for her to worry. That may be so, but would you humor the missus and I by coming for a ride? Show her you're all in one piece. If that's what it takes. Thank you kindly. What exactly are you and Strange working on? We are simply preparing some ideas he and I had for the exposition. Care to indulge an interested onlooker? If it's all the same to you, I'd rather not share any information until the doctor and I present our findings to the public. Of course. Just curious. What was he being so protective of? I guess I'd have to find out at the expo, just like everyone else. And A few days had passed, and I was easing back into the groove in my chair. Hello. Huh? It's Mrs. Englewood. What can I do for you, Miss Englewood? It's about my husband again. Oh? My husband's been absent in the late hours of the night into the morning. It seems he's working down at the boardwalk. I thought we'd already figured that out. That's not it. He won't tell me what he's working on down there. I'd like you to investigate and see what exactly he's spending so much time on. If you insist, Mrs. Englewood. This time around, I had a new friend waiting for me and it seemed he'd been told I wasn't any kind of courier. Maybe they were working on something big. It's it. I needed more information. Yeah. I know it's late, but I need a small favor. Just make sure to lock up when you're done. I only found one book by a Howard Strange, and it wasn't what I'd expected at all. Page after page of stuff right out of the pulps in my desk. It didn't add up, so I opted to get in touch with someone who might know a bit more about the good doctor. The place was weird, but I had a hunch she could tell me about the doctor's hobbies. Madame Marie, what can you tell me about Howard Strange? I just have to wait until the morning to
second half of the show. Now some of people come into your life and they bring that little bit of magic to your existence. Lucas Myers for me is one of those people. With his more than original brand of humor and his ability to deliver the human spirit in his one-man shows, Lucas touches all he reaches in places within themselves that inspire hope and happiness and it is with admiration and great pleasure that I introduce to you Lucas Myers. <laughs> Oh, we're doing this now. <laughs> is that the lesbian handshake? Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Oh, but there's a chest bump. Oh, there's a chest bump. Yeah. <laughs> you know what to do. Uh... <laughs> 
What a pleasure to have you on the show. What a pleasure to be on the show. <laughs> when, I t when I originally talked to Lucas and I was like, can you please be on my first show? You were alumni with IMTV. It would mean the world to me. Can you come on? And he was like, sent me this la rambling email about how busy he was and that he would come on, but only if he was allowed to stare into the lights. <laughs> the I'm just going to sit here. I assured him, though, if he did do that, see, it would be the funniest stare anybody had ever seen. So I like sit the, back, relax, 15 minutes of this. I like the... I like the human spirit thing. I think that's oh, my. Yeah. I think that's my wrestler name. Oh, nice! Yeah. <laughs> Lucas the Human Spirit Myers. <laughs> <laughs> it's true what I say about you, though. Like I've, we've been together a long time. Like, well, you 15 know what? Years or something. You know How what? long have and, we known each other? Uh, well, this is the this is the thing. Yeah. Jenna is responsible for my life. What? Yeah. No, seriously. No, seriously. I came to. I mean, I grew up in Nelson. I came back to Nelson. I had a one-person show. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll do it in Nelson. So I wandered into Charlotte's, and uh, there was these crazy people in there. And I said, hey, um, I, I have the show. Can I, can I do it here? And they're like, yeah, sure. And I was like, how much would it cost? And they're like, no, oh, you keep the door, and we'll just make beer sales. And I was like, well, there's no risk. So I booked a week. <laughs> right? True story. It was a risk for us. So Wednesday night, Wednesday night, there was uh, six people, I think. Mm -hmm. And then by the time the weekend rolled around, yeah. word got out, and we had decent houses. And my, uh, Krista, my now wife, uh, came to the Saturday show mm -hmm. and she brought her parents to the Sunday <gasps> show, uh, the mother of my two children. And uh, that was, that's kind of, that's the history there. Yeah. And her story, our story. It's uh, a beautiful story. Was there, and it was all your fault. <laughs> so. <laughs> I make families. <laughs> Well, wow, that's a real honor for you to say that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you start, when you start, I mean, I knew every word to every show you ever did. I, of course, was front and center for them. The <laughs> Charlottes was this little cultural hall that uh, only lasted a short amount of time here in Nelson. But, but it mattered. It mattered. It um, was a, yeah. I have an another, can I tell another yeah, okay. story? Yeah, okay. So my only experience doing um, open mic night was at Charlottes. Oh. And I, I mean, okay. the thing with me and music is I, I only play music in my shows. So I don't play it as a normal person. So to go up and play music as a normal person, I was freaking <laughs> terrified, right? And there's a, a song in one of my shows called East that Jenna was particularly fond of um, <laughs> called Fuck That Guy. <laughs> and it's, a, it's, a, like it's this, this kind of redneck character, right? And but then I, I caught up. And I sang one song. It was very awkward. And I said, and now I'd like to dedicate a song to Jenna. <laughs> and I started playing the song. And all I could think of was like, Everyone's just thinking this is about Jenna. <laughs> and it was just... One of my favorite pastimes. Yeah, yeah. No. Not anymore. No, obviously not. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not a true story. Not a true story. <laughs> well, I'm really excited for this new show. Oh, the new show. What's oh, yeah, it called? Right. Uh, the new show is called Campground. Campground. A murder mystery in the woods. In the woods. With music. Is that the whole title? That's the whole title. <laughs> You've gone from East yeah. and Deck now yeah. to, say it again. Uh, um, a campground, a murder mystery in the woods with, with music. music. <laughs> and is that, so that pretty much sums it up? That's it. You don't have to come see the show. Oh, okay, like, we're good. We're done. good. Yeah. Coming to see your shows is a treat. Of course we're all coming to your show. So can you give us, yes. <laughs> This is the kind of talent, that, you know, that Lucas in the Kootenays that puts us like uh, the upper echelon. We have so, you know, yeah, we'll this see. kind of we'll talent see. is, is, is world I'm just stage, writing it now. right? It's... I'm just writing it now, so we'll see. <laughs> like literally right now. But it is right comparable. Now. I think people would agree with me that your talent, uh, you know, matches up to anybody on the world stage. Okay, yeah. I'll take it. Take sure. It. Take it. <laughs> agree with yeah, me. Yeah, totally. Let's hear it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just a little pig. I'm just a little piggy. I'm just doing my thing, <laughs> rooting around in the mud. Wonderful. Well, tell us what it is. What is it about? Uh, what does it do besides the title? There must be more to it. Campground. I think there's some multimedia. There's some uh, multimedia stuff. Uh, yeah, my, my process of writing a show is like, what's the, what's the most difficult thing I could possibly try and do? Oh, I'll do that. Um, so this, this show has um, some projection in it. Uh, it's basically the story of a young guy who disappears. It's kind of my version. Well, because people think murder mystery, and you know all the modern murder mysteries are these kind of super intense, like the, the girl who poked the hornet's butt or whatever, you know that. <laughs> and they're so intense, right? They're like torture porn parts of them, right? Like it's like, and then he cut off her hand and sewed it into her vagina or whatever, and it's just like. <laughs> 
And I'm a I'm kind of a happy-go-lucky guy. So yeah. when I called it a murder mystery, I was like, ah, oh, shit. Now I gotta t cut up somebody's hand and sew it in their vagina. But <laughs> I don't do that. That doesn't happen in the show anymore. Uh, yeah, I don't. Know. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like my version of a murder mystery, which means there's actually no dead body. It's that, like, it's that mellow. Uh, so this kid's just gone missing, and uh, they're all, they're, they're looking, the, the cops are looking for him, and there's uh, like four or five characters uh, at this campground, and they've all somehow kind of intersected uh, ah. with this kid. They've all had some kind of interaction with him. Uh, and they, none of them want to talk about it, right? So the first half of the play is all kind of set up, right? And this kid, he's, he's um, posting videos online and they're all kind of weird, like ambient things and they're like, what are they called, vlogs? Yes. That sounds like sure. something, something out of that sounds cool. Star Trek or something. Yeah. <laughs> Captain, the vlogs are coming at Warp Speed 5. A video 5. blog. A video blog, that's yeah. right. <laughs> so he's posting these things and there's information in them but they're kind of, you're not quite sure what's going on. And uh, so we get that on stage. We get the detective talking about it. Uh, we get the crazy hippie guy that lives in the campground with plays the didgeridoo shows up. And so we get, we get introduced to all the characters. And the second half is all the detective interviewing uh, the, the, the suspects, as it ah. were. And then, <laughs> this is, I, just, I, I just sneak music into my shows. Uh, they're doing a talent show at the campground. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sure. Doesn't that always happen at a campground? Um, so what they do is they, they have the interview and then they have the, they play the song that they're going to do at the thing. And that, that's kind of how the second half works. And uh, there's also, of course, I mean, of course, there's a shadow puppet thing because, I mean, <laughs> yes! come on, you've got to have something like a shadow so puppet important. thing. So important. So yeah, it's, it's kind of, there's a, it's, a, it's a lot and uh, I hope I pull it off. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there front and center mm -hmm. on the Saturday. What's your process? I want to know like how you come up with all these magical tidbits. There's been how many over the last 15 years in terms uh, of plays have you made? I don't know. Like six or like six or seven. Yeah. And then there's the Chromali brothers. The Chromali brothers and they're yes. just kind of this ongoing right. thing. Well, what I do is I, I get um, clothespins and I put them on my ears. Right here, and then I write, ah, and then I take them off and I put them on my nipples, and then I like, ah, right. And if it's still not working, yeah, I go, I go down low. No, I, I, I like to. I mean, I like to create. I like to create shows that are accessible, like Deck. Mm -hmm. It's about DIY stuff. Hello Baby is about having a baby. Uh, I, like to, I like to create shows where the audience can come and go, oh, okay, that, either that's me or I know someone that's gone through that experience because I think that's important yeah. that people are, are connecting to it. Like I'm not going to do like a six-hour version of Miss Julie as a leper or something. You know what I mean? Like, which Anymore. Not anymore. I mean, that could be totally awesome, but it's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something that's, it's, I, I don't know if it's accessible, but it's just something that, that I'm interested in. I think I would be interested in seeing. You so, do it so well. well you I really, went, really do. I went to it. I went uh, camping. Yeah. With, with this show, I went camping yeah. with uh, with my with my family, and I was like, "This is like a little world, right?" And it's also everyone's gone camping, so the, they have associations with it. So there's lots of uh, opportunity for humor mm -hmm. in that, and. Uh, and I thought, yeah, there's this little world uh, here. And then I'm like, well, how can I make it interesting? So then the missing persons thing came up. And then I was talking to a friend of mine who is down in Vancouver, and uh, he runs a theater, and he's all about you know, getting the audience in. So he's like, what's it called? And I was going with the one word thing, like deck or east, and I said, camp. That's initially what it was called. And, <laughs> and he's like, unless you have transvestites in it, you can't call it camp. Because, <laughs> and I was kind of ba banking on people going, oh, maybe there's transvestites and showing up. And I'm like, ha ha, I got you in the door. Now you have to watch the show. Um, but he's like, that's not fair. That's not, I'm like, okay, fine. I'll call it campground. He's like, eh, still not sure. So I was like, okay, fine, asshole. It's called campground, a murder mystery musical in the woods. But it's not a musical. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. So, but that's, that's kind of, and I'm like, oh, now I have the murder mystery kind of framework. That's where the detective came from. That's where the murder mystery, even though it's not a murder mystery, came from. And, uh, and then I kind of went from there. Mm -hmm. And I just picked stuff I'm interested in. Like, mm. this has some political stuff in it. It has some uh, sexual politics stuff in it. And Good. it's just, and it's like, uh, and, and people taking risks. And I, I just try to think of what I am interested in or, or what kind of message I want to I wanna put out there into the world. And I just <laughs> work it in. You do a great job of that. With I think music. All the test. With music. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to give us a little sneak peek tonight, I hear? Mm, I think I am. All right. Mm, I think I am. Um, 
What Bring out doing? the guitar. Bring out the guitar. Uh, I should also mention, as the guitar is being brought out, there is a there's an on, kind of an online element to the show. Uh, two of the characters in the show um, are actually have online profiles uh, on Facebook. Um, there's a guy named uh, Justin Case. He's the kind of hipster, uh, <laughs> the hipster character in the show. And then there's Michael. Hodgkins, who's uh, the kind of redneck guy that you're going to meet tonight. And, um, and so you can actually go on Facebook and you can, you can check out their profiles. And basically the idea is I wanted, uh, I wanted to include this because the detective on stage live at the show is going to go online. He's going to go on their Facebook things, and it's this, I mean, it's kind of a cautionary tale, right? Just make sure your privacy settings are good, or, or <laughs> a detective might find your Facebook profile and, you know, go after you for something. But you can go on, and, and you, can, you can actually uh, check out their posts from, I think it's August 28th to September 2nd, and they talk about going camping, and they talk about things that actually happen in the show. So feel free to, uh, to go online, just in case, and uh, Michael Hodgkins who I will uh, let allow uh, him, himself to introduce himself to you. Hey. Mike, and uh, I'm going to sing you a little tune here. Wow, I'm really close to you guys. How's it going? <laughs> uh, I'm going to sing you a little tune here. Uh, I'm not going to talk into that yet, because that sounds like I'm coming from another planet. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I had this experience uh, at the campground. I can't talk about the show, because uh, I've signed like one of those confidentiality things. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, everybody in the show is a woman. Uh, and um, we're also all dead. And uh, we're in kind of a um, nightmare version of the internet. Uh, and I am Kaiser Sozek, so. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but basically, um, is that me? Oh, they turned me off. Oh, am I still on? They turned me off and on. They turned me off and on. I'm getting turned on. You spin me right round, baby, right round. Um, <laughs> so I kind of had this awakening. I work for the oil and gas industry. I'm from Medicine Hat. And, um, and yeah, I picked up this kid hitchhiking. And I told him, you know, we were chatting. And I told him what I work. And he just went after me, right? Like, he just kind of was like, oh, you're ruining the earth and everything. And, and I'm like, buddy, if it wasn't me, it'd be somebody else. And he's like, that's a shitty argument, right? Because, no, really, because like, oh, so, like, oh, so you're killing babies, right? And it's like, well, if I'm not killing the babies, somebody else will. It's like, no, stop killing the babies, right? Like, it's like stupid. So I, I got a bit pissed off. I have a bit of a temper. Uh, so I kicked him out of my truck. Um, but I, was, I wasn't going very fast. So, <laughs> so it was OK. But he kind of got me thinking, his conviction, right? And I was like, you yeah, know, he's kind of right. So I wrote this song. Uh, it's called uh, Black Thorn Lake. That's the name of the campground, eh? Uh, Blackthorn Lake, an oil man's lament, and um, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to dedicate it to Stephen Harper. And, um, and this, by the way, this is an actual, like a Calgary, you know, one of those Calgary white um, old stock Canadian hats, right? <laughs> there we go. Global warming 
a swim And what Big Daddy gets Whatever Big Daddy Harper wants And if you're in the way You'll end up like the CBC and the vets Blackthorn Lake I know what it takes To make your waters warmer Cause ignorance is bliss So let's stay ignorant about this And help me and my friends Make money hand over fist So fuck the scientists Fuck the environmentalists Fuck the children Fuck the glaciers And fuck you our time's running out Yeah, this expiration date's been stamped I'm gonna party my ass off As I head down the exit ramp Yeah, I'm gonna party my ass off As I head down that exit ramp In my Escalade Party my ass off As I take us down that exit ramp being here, Lucas. Oh, that was amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. Give it up for Lucas. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Make sure and go see his show. That's right. October 2nd and 3rd, that's at the Capitol Theater. You can get tickets for that now online. Funny enough, um, we have been a little bit preoccupied with Harper over the last, you know, few weeks here around the lineup. And so um, I'd like you to take a little look at what Shane and I spent our weekend doing. Watch this. <laughs> uh, I'm just so tired of thinking about Harper and talking about Harper. It's like Harper, 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 Harper. Uh, the days leading up to this election, they're taking so long. Uh, I'm obsessing over it. I just, I just, I just want it to be over, you know? Yeah, I totally know what you mean. He's all anyone's talking about. He's in my news feed, he's in every newspaper. I had a dream about him last night. It's like he's everywhere. Here's your coffee. We've got to get this off our minds. Cootie Craft Camp! Tea cozy. On to the next project. to the next project.
We're gonna. Yeah. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, I think we're fine. We're fine. This is yeah. fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's only three more weeks, right? Three weeks. Three weeks. That's all, that's all it is. Yeah. It'll be different. Things will be different. I encourage you to please all go out and vote before October 19th and vote your heart, please. Now, with great pleasure, I'd love to introduce to you the sizzling, the smoldering, the sexy show cats. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Uh, please have a seat. Yes, darling. Please have a seat beside Aaron. Everything else is Nice to see. Oh, you got this. Hi, ladies. Ha ha! The show cats. Hi, <laughs> yeah. Feel overdressed. It's a little hot. <laughs> yeah, this is what I should have worn. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Been much easier. Oh, thank you for coming on tonight, ladies. We're pleasure. really excited to see you perform. Thank you. But tell me about how this started. How, how did you? It, yeah. How does this all start? Yeah. How does this start? For me, it all yeah. starts with the passion of dance. In my okay. life, dance has always been something that's been beside me, walking mm -hmm. along beside me. And you know, quite honestly, it's um. You know, it is my tool of transformation. Ever since I could remember, I was dancing around and choreographing show and tell for my mom and school. Aww. And how did it all start? It had to start really little, but you know, to go back to exactly with the show cats, um, you know, it's been about two years or so in up making. in November sure. and in the making. And I have a background of the samba and salsa and belly dance. And, um, you know, I would say the Scarlet Rose. Uh, Burlesque is mm -hmm. what really initiated the uh, showgirl uh, flavor, I'd say. And then that kind of initiated, okay, let's do this. Ladies, let's get out there and yeah. strut our stuff in the showgirl flavor. Mm -hmm. And it's just been so fun. What a journey. There's something so empowering about it, isn't it, when you come together as a troupe and um, you, 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 know, you write your own dance routine. You we do. perform them all around locally. Um, you, Erin, now... I, you've been da when we first met. You were doing aerial dance, which is a real interesting. Oh, yeah. Remember that? I was. Yeah. I had so joined the circus train. long ago. Yeah. Tell and me about the circus. So I joined the circus in Costa Rica, and I was in my late twenties, and I was like, oh, I, I really got to go find myself in the jungle, and that's what I did. <laughs> so, that's where you are. And you know, I started to throw fire around my head, and he was like, okay, this I'm really embodying the element of fire, and then as soon I was like, okay, I want to get up there with these fantastic. South American artists and mm -hmm. so I learned from them and I was climbing ropes hanging off of uh, trees in in parks in Costa Rica. Really? That's, that's where how you I learned started. that art? I did. Wild. So okay. it's been quite a journey and I would I would honestly say you know I learned the circus arts and performance arts from my friends from Costa Rica, from Israel, from mm -hmm. travelers and artists from South America and mm -hmm. They really taught me some skills on how to perform on a street level, and you know that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And I was like throwing fire on my head, and just like <laughs> <laughs> I had a little bit of African dance background. I was like, let's do this. <laughs> let's get into it. Well, and so all of this has led you to burlesque. Do you think um, you moved back to any of those forms, or is this where your heart is now? Well, I think that the tapestry of all time, all kinds of flavors are always there, mm -hmm. you know, because that's our foundation of who we are in our artistic practice. So, you know, what I like about burlesque is that for me, it is really the word burlesque is to, to make joke, to make ridicule of satire mm -hmm. of society. So for me, it's a free license to be whatever I want to be mm -hmm. and embody the empowerment of uh, of 
a full powered woman in her body and expressing, express, pardon me, expressing how she wants to express herself. Well said. So really well said. Thank you. And it has become, I think, over the years, a more of a revered and respected form of entertainment, especially in this community. Um, <clears throat> there's just been a lot of talented women always doing this. Little secret. I started out in burlesque you here too. Mm -hmm. Ladies, I'm not dancing tonight. Yeah, she was. She <laughs> was. Firecracker. <laughs> a long time ago now. Um, but you guys have really carried the torch to a whole nother level. And, uh, you know, you are just blowing audiences away. And this particular troupe has been, you know, building steam for the last two years and really come to this amazing, respected spot. Where can people find out about you and your shows um, as you're performing Facebook, throughout the years? For sure. Facebook? Yeah, we got a Facebook page. So, so go can like them. follow us, come like us and follow yep. us, our videos, our shows. Aaron teaches classes as well, yeah. so if you want to get up there mm -hmm. and try it. You know. Is this where you got started with Aaron or? Aaron and yeah. I met in tango, oh, actually. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. So we both have a love of dance. Okay. And uh, she said, Sherry, you got to come try this. Thank and you. I was like, oh, I don't know. And then <laughs> they put the hook. And that was it. <laughs> and two years later, and yeah. Amazing, lovely women, right? Mm -hmm. Empowering women that support each other, build each right. other up, not tear each other down. And the community has been incredible. Mm -hmm. We have had gig after gig That's after gig. True. So right. thank you, Nelson. Amazing. It's so true. amazing, Erin. So I'll move to Stacy. Stacy, do you want to tell me about you and your ah. involvement? Yes. <laughs> we all want to know. How did you become involved in uh, dance and this form in our fair in city? In this form, is this thing on? <laughs> it sure is. Okay. Um, in this form, well, two years ago we started dancing, but Erin yeah. and I were doing samba before right. that. Okay. So yeah, she, yeah, her energy can fill a room and uh -huh. she's got tons to spare, like just mm -hmm. so fun. So it's been an honor dancing oh, with her for so long. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. And it's just, yeah, improves my quality of life. It's ah, so fun. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Introduce yourself to everyone, please. I'm Velvet. Velvet. Hi. Yes. <laughs> and, and for you, I guess what we want to know is what, what, what is it about this kind of dance that draws you to it? The outfits, <laughs> the outfits are super fun. I love getting dressed up. Yeah, <laughs> you know this is a really yeah. good time. Yeah, and uh, I just love dancing, and it's really sure. uh, cool that you were talking about Shambhala earlier because I was thinking about this, and mm -hmm. really that's what got me starting to dance. Really? Like I went to those early parties on the farm, mm -hmm. yeah, and just really loved dancing and right. getting dressed up, mm -hmm. and then I got mm -hmm. into belly dance. Uh, Aaron and I have known each other for ages, did some samba together, and then it's such an amazing group of women. We have so much fun and uh, dancing, getting dressed up and entertaining <laughs> people. It's a blast. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have anything to add? Do you want to tell us anything more? Do you want to tell us about your experience with dance? Sure. Yes. Oh. <laughs> tell the audience who you are, what your stage name is. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I'm I'm Sage, and uh, I started Soul dancing um, mm -hmm. quite a while ago. But when I came to uh, Nelson here, I ran into Erin with the samba mm -hmm. group as well, mm -hmm. and uh, have followed her into many different other projects. And really, um, I wasn't sure about uh, getting into this particular genre but uh, I wanted to learn how to move my body in other ways, mm -hmm. and I had never worn heels mm. before <laughs> mm. <laughs> while dancing, so that was a challenge for me. Mm. Um, I, I do because you came myself from, a bit of yeah. a tomboy, right. even though I don't look like one, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a real fun and, and challenging and um, self-expressive time for, mm -hmm. for myself and for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned a little bit more about uh, myself mm -hmm. and the ways um, to perform through, okay. because this is more a little bit more theater. It's a little bit more interaction with your audience. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, that was a, you know an exciting thing to, uh, to get into. Wonderful. Yeah. So we're going to see a little something that you prepared for us tonight. That's right. Yeah. 
I've been working hard get, on this. It's hot in here now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things are about to get a lot hotter. <laughs> so we're going to get them set up to go, and we would love it if you would just sit back and relax and enjoy our beautiful ladies as they give you a little piece of the hard work they've put into their, their craft. Take it away, ladies. Okay.
for being a part of this first episode. Stick around. Thank you all for being here tonight. This is the end of the show. We are so grateful to all of you for coming out. To those of you who have been supporting us on our Indiegogo campaign, liking us on Facebook, or just helping us with everything that's possible to make this thing float, we are forever grateful. A big thank you to Will Johnson at the Nelson Star, Bob Hall here at Selkirk College. We want to thank College itself for all the things they've given us in time to make this show happen. That's right. The Adventure Hotel for giving us part of the set. There's just so many people to thank. Give it up for Yellow Jack. It's Wes's birthday tonight. Happy birthday, Wes. Coming up on October 30th. We have a Halloween show. Please come back. Please dress up. There'll be lots of prizes. We have a shaman witch, hypnotherapist, who will be joining us. We have the Nelson Paranormal League, who will be here telling us all about ghosting. And the Samba Band will bring the party. So until next time, go forth with your awesomeness and be good to each other. From us at the lineup, I'm Generator. Good night!